Welcome to this podcast series on SAS statistical graphics presented by Amadeus Software. My name is Mark Jones and I work for Amadeus who are experts in SAS and providers of consultancy, support and training for SAS software. Please visit our website at www.amadeus.co.uk to find out more about this podcast series as well as the other services that we provide. In the following presentation I will be introducing you to the SAS Graph statistical graphics procedures which will enable you to easily create high quality data visualizations. Before we get going, I should let you know that the majority of techniques presented in this podcast will require SAS version 9.2 or later. In this episode, we'll focus on three of the statistical graphics or SG procedures, namely the SG plot procedure, the SG panel procedure, and the SG scatter procedure. There is a fourth procedure of note, the SG render procedure, which we will focus on in the next episode of this podcast series. The SG plot procedure can be used to create a wide variety of plots, for example, scatter plots and series plots, fit and confidence plots such as regression plots and confidence ellipses. Notice that in this example, I have overlaid a scatter plot with a confidence ellipse. While there are some rules governing which plot types can be combined, Overlaying plots like this is a very straightforward procedure with SGPlot, as we will see. Proc SGPlot can also create distribution plots such as histograms and box plots, and categorization plots such as dot plots and bar charts. Let's look at the SAS code that produces some of these plots. For these relatively simple examples, the Proc SGPlot statement simply defines the data that the procedure will use. Note that we can go straight into PROC SGPLOT. There is no need to specify any special options or open any ODS destinations. By default, the SG procedures will use the ODS listing destination, but rather than creating the graph in the SAS output window or graph window, it will instead create a portable network graphics or PNG file in the current working directory, which can be identified in the status bar. It is possible to create other file types and to include graphs in other ODS destinations such as HTML or PDF. In this first example, we will create a scatter plot, and to achieve this, we simply use the scatter statement and tell PROC SGPLOT which variables to use for the X axis and which to use for the Y axis. Running this code creates a PNG file containing the requested scatter plot. Note that the default file name for the PNG file is the name of the procedure, in this case, SGPLOT. Opening this PNG file, we can see our final graph. Overlaying plots is as simple as requesting each of the different plots within PROC SGPLOT. Returning to our first example, if we wish to add a confidence ellipse, we simply include the ellipse statement with the necessary options. The plots are created in the order that they appear within PROC SGPLOT, so in this case I have requested the ellipse plot first so that the scatter plot is laid on top. Running this code and opening the resulting PNG file we can see the final result. Customizing graphs is just a question of using the right options on the statement which requests our plots and adding additional statements as needed. In this example we will produce a series or line plot Again, specifying the variables to use on the X and Y axis, but in addition, we will also specify a grouping variable. The X and Y axis statements have also been added, which give us control over the axes in our plot. Executing this code generates the following graph. There are many other types of plot that can be generated using PROC SGPLOT. It's just a question of finding the correct statements and options to use. As always, extensive documentation for PROC SGPLOT is available in the SAS help. We now turn our attention to the SG panel procedure. This procedure is capable of producing most of the same plots as PROC SGPLOT, but it allows us to split a graph into by groups and generate a separate graph or cell within the panel for each group. Let's use PROC SG panel to generate a histogram with a separate cell for each value of the variable gender in our dataset. The panel by statement is the secret to PROC SG panel, as it allows us to define the cells in the plot using classification variables, in this case, gender. Note that the histogram statement is identical to the statement we could have used in PROC SG plot. Executing this code, 
again creates a PNG file, but this time our graph contains two cells, one for each gender. By default, a panel with one row and two columns has been generated, and a label has been placed above each cell defining the by group it contains. The layout, cell labels, and many more attributes of this plot are controllable by using appropriate statements and options in PROCSG panel. We are not limited to one classification variable on the panel by statement. In fact, we can use as many as we like. We have now added the variable grade to the panel by statement, as well as options to control the number of columns and rows. Running this code, we now generate a plot with four cells. Note that the classification variables are sequentially added in the order listed on the panel by statement, so in this case we get a panel with grade nested within gender. If we have exactly two classification variables, then we can add an option to our panel by statement to request what is called a lattice layout. This modifies our panel by displaying first classification variable labels above the cells and the second classification variables to the right of the cells. As the name suggests, the SG scatter procedure produces scatter plots. However, rather than limiting us to just two variables as in a traditional scatter plot, PROC SG scatter allows us to create a panel of scatter plots comparing pairs of potentially any number of variables. There are three plotting statements that can be used, each of which will produce a different type of panel. The compare statement allows us to define the variables to be placed on the horizontal of the panel, termed as the x-axis of the panel, and the vertical, or y-axis of the panel. Running this code generates a PNG file which contains the requested panel of scatter plots. Notice that the axis scales are shared between the plots in the horizontal and vertical directions. The plot statement allows each individual plot to have its own axes. The syntax used to request the plots is a little different to the compare statement and provides more flexibility. In this example, we first request a single plot of height against weight. We then request plots of salary, overtime and weight against age. We can continue specifying plot requests in this way. The graph generated by this plot statement contains the four plots requested, each with their own set of axes. The matrix statement allows us to create a scatter plot matrix. On this statement, we simply list the variables we wish to plot. The plot produced contains each pairwise scatter plot of the variables requested. In this case, the full matrix has been created, so each plot is displayed twice with the axes swapped each time. The diagonal contains the names of the variables. As with the SG plot and SG panel procedures, the SG scatter procedure supports many other statements and options for customizing these plots. All of these procedures also interact with the output delivery system. The ODS graphics statement now controls things like the graphical file type that the procedures create and the file name used. It is also possible to send output from these procedures into other ODS destinations and ODS styles are fully supported. For example, going back to PROC SG plot, this time we will produce a horizontal bar chart, but we will use ODS statements to change the file type created from PNG to JPEG, create a PDF file in addition to the JPEG file, and apply a different style to the PDF file to affect the visual appearance of the plot. As you can see, we now have a JPEG rather than a PNG file, although the visual appearance of the graph has not materially changed. The PDF file has also been generated and the alternative style applied. In the next episode of this podcast series, we will dig deeper into SAS statistical graphics and I will introduce you to the graphics template language and PROCSG render. In the meantime, if this episode has prompted you to learn more about the statistical graphics procedures, then Amadeus are pleased to offer courses and webinars which go into much more detail about the topics introduced in this podcast series. If you'd like to find out more about these offerings, please visit the Amadeus Software website at www.amadeus.co.uk. That concludes this presentation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Amadeus Software podcast. We hope you found it useful. Please make sure to check out the rest of this podcast series via our website. We also welcome any comments or suggestions you may have for future tips. Please feel free to contact us via email at info at amadeus.co.uk, by telephone, or by visiting our website at www.amadeus.co.uk.